Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together. As promised, I am in a blue shirt. But they're wondering, did they? Did he just go change his shirt? You'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome. We're, we're talking this week about the Hebrews and the Phoenicians. We have been moving through Mesopotamia mm -hmm. and we're starting to make our way towards the Mediterranean, which I, we mm -hmm. all know we're going to spend a little bit of time there. And she, our daughter first was like, Phoenicians, is that, are those Greeks? <laughs> those are Greeks. <laughs> She's very excited to get to the Greeks. We're she like, is. just hang in there and, and we're, we're like next good. week it's mice and Owen. she goes are those the greeks sort of not really not yet not yet mm -hmm. um so this week we focused on geography because we're talking about not, we've been doing one civilization a week now we got two uh this week and we we had we covered a large uh, large amount of territory because of the phoenicians starting to move through the mediterranean touching different areas in north africa and really starting to expand so we've we really moved and we had to really talk about a new area of the world. And so we, I had to do a little bit of geography uh, talk. So is there a reason that they put the two, the two together where they just, yeah. they were, they were contemporaries at the same time? They were literally, or? they literally started like essentially right next to some. Did they um, interact? Yeah, they did. So, so obviously Hebrews were, um, you know, in Israel and right above them in Lebanon was essentially where the Phoenicians were. Oh, okay. And then the Phoenicians kind of like exploded out from there because of their sailing and, and the ability. Right, that to was move. the great, that was the, that was the first great like sailing civilization, right? Yeah. One of the first, well, yeah, I th we think so. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot Those of ones where we found the boats and things. Exactly. Yeah. Have the, there's a, there's the a lot boats. of cultures that did a lot of sailing because at this time frame there are people moving through the Pacific and Southeast Asia and everything and they're using boats and stuff. But this this was a very focused. What was really incredible about the Phoenicians is their ability to um, put together trade networks, and mm. I think that was really the big thing. A lot of people were moving to migrate, and that's that was in, incredible and and you know awe inspiring that you take that that leap out into the unknown. But these guys were actually using it to trade, and and they were bringing knowledge, and they were actually. It was kind of funny. They were almost like a quasi glue between other civilizations that didn't oh, really yeah. know about other people that existed. And they were the, kind of the intermediary. So it was really kind of interesting. They were the merchants. Essentially, yeah, the merchant class. And they did talk a little bit about that in the history quest this week, talking about this, these important things that the Phoenicians were able to bring. They weren't really a warring uh, people because they were kind of small and, and local. They really focused on trade and using trade to build power. Mm, and that was kind cool. of an interesting thing. And then we, and the, obviously, the other thing we talked about is. The founding of a first great religion of the world that we, that still is with us today, especially with the Hebrews. So and the alphabet, which the Phoenicians started, right? Exactly. So the right. so alphabet, that's kind of fun. The Phoenician alphabet, and that's kind of like a little. Uh, it was kind of a funny little uh, twist on the history hop this week, where at the end of the history hop and the history quest, um, you're going with these Phoenician sailors, and they're talking about all these things they're super proud of. Um, the the Lebanon cedar uh, that they sold to the Egyptians, their purple robes, and you as the history hop person goes, oh yeah, we make everything out of wood now. You know, they're like, oh. <laughs> and they thought they were special. And they go, oh, look at this beautiful purple stuff. And you're like, yeah, look at my, my pajamas. They're like 20 different colors. And they're like, oh. And they said, but I'll give you this one. We still use your alphabet. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> so, so it was kind of funny. Those history hops are kind of interesting. They are there. We're going to do an episode. Talk, we're about halfway through it. And we want to talk about the book because it's really, really yeah, good. And we history want to... Quest. We have lots of things we'd like to say about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's get into it. So first thing, yeah. let's start off with I'm not crying. You're crying. So I'm not crying. You're crying. It's been three weeks, right? We all, I think a lot of folks have read Charlotte's Web. I have to say, this, I didn't prep you on this. This is the only book that I have ever cheated on in school. Look at that one to one copy from the artwork. That's pretty. This was our, this was our bookmark. That's pretty amazing. So, Wilbur doing a backflip half twist. As, a, as an elementary school student, I was supposed to read this book and do a diorama, but I didn't read it and I just did the diorama because I had seen the movie so many times. So this is actually the first time that I've ever read this too. So yeah. that was kind of exciting. It was, it was a good book. Um, it, it's really sweet. Um, sweet, absolutely gorgeous. Well, first of all, I mean, the story is amazing. The story is yeah. wonderful, kind of that coming of age, innocence, um, talking a lot about life and death. If you are a little bit sensitive to life and death, if you've had a recent passing or something like that, they do talk a lot about that in here. Mm -hmm. um, and there are mm -hmm. scenes where it's not just like, I don't want to die. It's like, pleading to not want to die right it's like there's a little bit of element there of of, of fear and, and of the unknown yeah. and everything so there's there's a little bit of that so there's a little bit of warning there but if, if you don't have those issues this is a great book very emotional mm -hmm. um, obviously the story of wilbur um you know this fun loving runt of a pig who was just going to be um turned into wiener sausages and he was rescued by fern and uh and she helped 
to take care of him. And, and he was sold to her uncle, and there he lived his life out on the farm. And obviously he meets Charlotte, who lives in the pen above him, and she, and she becomes his friend, and he pleads with her to save his life, and she has to think about what, you know, what way am I going to be able to do that? And she begins to spell words in the in her web as as a way to it's, try to draw I'm attention like, to this big. I'm getting like shivers. It's yeah, such a good story. It's such a good story. But great, it's so great emotional. ending. Very emotional ending. And they, it's one of those things where it's an emotional ending, and it dra- and they he he Mr. White here uh, stretch whole, stretches you in, into the end, especially yeah, in the end with the you know all the five hundred and. 14 little um, mm. baby spiders that, that came with it. So very great, great story. Obviously, we all know about it. And it's, it's really fun. We were able to pair this with, of course, there's the animated version, and mm-hmm. then there's more recently the movie with Julia Roberts as the spider. Mm-hmm. So you're able to pair this nicely with the movie. We did a Charlotte's Web babe double feature. Because you got to do the, the, the pork double feature. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then it's really fun. We're doing this right at Halloween time. Yeah. And so there's tons spider of, like, stuff. spider stuff as far as, like, um, spider cooking and different mm-hmm. kinds of, um, you know, making spiders with, you know, pretzels into Reese's. And there's all kinds of different spider crafts and things. So yeah. you can really, if you're doing this, no matter what time of year you're doing this at, look up spider Halloween stuff and you'll find lots of different crafts and activities mm-hmm. and cooking projects and stuff that you can do with your kids um, that you can really use to accentuate Absolutely. this. Wonderful book. Should be on everyone's shelf. Absolutely great. This yep. is a nice hard hardcover version we got. Yeah, it's a, it's such a good book. It's such a great book. So we're going to talk about not Emily Cook. We're talking about Sarah, Sarah Cook. Cook. Yeah. So so this is um this is yeah world mythology for children. So this is we want to talk about this because we're halfway through now. Mm-hmm. This is the only book in the curriculum you can't get at the library because it's written by Emily's daughter and it's sold only on Amazon. So you won't usually find a used copy unless somebody is selling their entire like set of Build Your Library and books we've read, or whatever. We've read from this a number of times. Uh, Egyptians, and I think there was a run of the Sumerians as well. Right. So, yeah. And you can see the, the... Oh, you want to go to the... No, no. I was just going to say the, the, the um, I'll index. Drive. I'll well. let you drive. I'll, I'll look here. And... <laughs> so, yeah. So the, the first part is all about Egyptian mythology, then Mesopotamian myths, then Judeo Christian. It's going to get into Chinese, Greek, and then Roman. So each one of them is only a couple of pages. Yeah. So really short. Very short read. Very minimal drawings. I, I think if you have a, a highly visual kid, this is probably not the book for you. Also, if you have a, an accelerated reader, mm. it's it may be something they can read as well. The, the words are not, it's essentially the original stories, the myth, myth stories that can be a little long, maybe mm-hmm. like 10, 15 pages long. It's condensed into two pages, so a little bit easier to read. And a more advanced first, second grade reader can easily read this on their own. So we've really enjoyed this. This has been good. What we would say, though, is that if you're on a budget or you have space concerns, like, you know, you're traveling while you're schooling, you can find all of this in other books. And if you have a really visual learner, you might want to find this in a book with some really beautiful pictures. That being said, this is written very appropriately for this age. In you know, we we have that great book on Egyptian gods and goddesses Mm -hmm. that was beautiful, but not written for this age. And so it was like, well, it's an okay book, but it's probably not the best selection for this unless you have more of an advanced uh, advanced learner. This is right size for this, but mm-hmm. it's not very visual, and it is an extra thing you'll have to buy. So yeah. it gets our recommendation for that, but if you're on a tight budget or you're traveling or you've got really visual kids, you might think about getting this someplace else. It's also fairly short, so it's about 50 pages long. You're not going to read from it every week. It's mm-hmm. only selected. I think we've only hit it like three or four times in the course of like 14 weeks. So yeah, you're right. If you're space constrained, if you're traveling, if you're doing some world schooling thing, hauling around a small little book, even though it is very thin and very small and it can just slide in there, it may be too much. But you know, for your extra 10 bucks or something, I mean, it's like Egypt, it's got two stories. It's got Ra and Horus. You know, we read a bunch of different gods and goddess stories uh, because our daughter just wanted a lot more than that. So even though we read this, this wasn't like all for us. We still had to go out and get other things. So your mileage may vary with this one, but overall, I don't have any problems with, it's a good book. It's written well. And it's, even though it's not highly visual, um, you know, our daughter has really enjoyed it. So to kind of take that kind of mix. Yeah. Especially for this week, um, you know, to read these two, like you, you have to read one story one day and then another story another day. I mean, they're only two pages long. I read them all in one sitting and we just talked about them at, uh, you know, and we paired it with another book here that we have. So this week was, right. obviously, this is a secular podcast. We're secular, but we are talking about a civilization that has a famous religion. Obviously, 
uh, the Hebrews and the Jews. Right. Um, so the the stories this week were the creation myth and also the, um, the Noah's Ark. Right? Noah's Ark. So uh, that is story. one thing that you will find about this book is that when it comes to like Judeo Christian myths specifically, this is going to approach them in an entirely secular manner, yeah. which you will also find in History Quest, but which could be difficult to find in other books. Yeah. So especially this this group, it would be hard to find secular text. The History Quest here. Um, did a good mm-hmm. job at it. Um, when you're doing the regular reading for this week, they did a very good job at kind of talking about the religion, the birth of the religion. They they, they highlighted the fact that, remember in Egypt, um, there was the one Egyptian ruler that made the switch to monotheism, but then immediately flipped back to mm-hmm. polytheism. This is the first civilization that stuck with the monotheism um, all the way. And so it, it's, it was a kind of a watershed moment in world religions which is a nice parallel, a nice little segue into See Inside World Religions. Now, this is a great book from Usborne. It's right. a flat book. It's a appeal. Lift enough, the flap. Lift the we flap. love these. We, we, we have always recommended these they're, they're so fun for and our kids. You know what the weird thing is, Ariel? We are not Usborne resellers at all. We're not. I actually always just get them online. We're I don't get actually online. get them from any MLM yeah. thing. But so what's fun about this, we actually got this for our Around the World study yeah. because it covers a little bit of all kinds of major world religions. Yeah. And it even talks about the start of, I think there's a page here. Oh, yeah. This is the major religions of the world and where mm-hmm. they're at. Yeah. And then this is the start of gods and goddesses. And it even starts talking about Egypt and some of the early Sumerian gods and things. Mm-hmm. So really, that's hel- really helpful and, and really kind of fun. Yeah, obviously, you could just tear through this book in you know, a single sitting. But it's really <laughs> nice to pull in when you hit that time frame to just quickly flip through and go, oh, look, here it is. Right. And so each page is not about a specific religion. Like this is gods and goddesses. This is worship and prayer, right? And so it has it has what worship and prayer looks like in lots of different, mm-hmm. or what festivals and celebrations look like in lots of different religions. Especially if you're trying to do a comparative study, you you know, if you're diving into yeah. the culture of that region, like hey, if we're going to India, we want to talk about Buddhism and Hinduism and obviously um, uh, Islam, and, and like you have all these different religions right. in an area, and you want to see what what different you know, cultural practices are, this this can help you, especially at this level. This is fun. This is part about like uh, famous stories from different mm-hmm. world mm-hmm. religions, what they believe happens after death in different religions. And, you know, this is just really fun. Yeah, this is an educational, mm-hmm. um, informational. So I think that this is great in the same way that the, the history year by year timeline book is great mm-hmm. in that it can show you kind of parallels that are happening. So you can say like, oh, we're studying Sumeria and look at the Sumerian gods and goddesses and then and see, mm-hmm. oh, they had a similar one in Egypt and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it, it makes for a really good study. And I know that there's a there's an upper level book of this. I, I want to say it's maybe it's just called Religions of the World as an Usborne. Yeah. It's not a lift the flap, um, but I've heard good things about that too. But yeah, this is a great start book. So really recommend that. Yeah, especially Kids love the especially these the ancient books. civilizations where we know we're going to be getting a lot of cultural stuff. Especially the Greeks that are coming up mm-hmm. where gods and goddesses there. Romans will have the exact same oh, yeah. thing. Um, when we go to, over into China and then we get into, you know, uh, the Middle East and whatnot, you're going to see all these different religions coming in. And they played mm-hmm. a huge cultural aspect. And us as secular homeschoolers, we need to make sure we understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, we're going to be bringing in some text to maybe help you guys um, educate your kids on, you know, why things are certain important to those cultures and those peoples. Right. All right. So we talked a lot about the Phoenicians this week. We focused heavily there. Uh, we looked at a lot of the boat pictures because we wanted to think about, oh, yes, Ariel's so I did the, a craft. You guys. So they were famous for sailing, obviously, mm-hmm. um, and then they were famous for the purple dye. And right. so we went ahead and did a an experiment. So we got some Ooh. cheap one. I think it was a pack from Fred Meyer of one dollar washcloths. Right. So and you then, actually boil uh, blackberries, or I think you or, could do blueberries. They called for blueberries, but we I, I we didn't only have had blackberries. So, so blackberries. we did you boil blackberries for half an hour, and then you put in the cloth um, for five minutes and let it sit, and it comes out this beautiful purple color. And it was nice. We got to do two of them so our daughters now each have their own washcloths. So they were famous for the um, they used shells of these um, little snails that were in the Mediterranean. They crushed them and it was kind of funny in the history hop they talked about, not the uh, the history quest, they talked about how smelly it was. They they said it was actually their city, this one city was like really famous for how bad it smelled because that's where they did all the purple dyeing of all the fabric uh, that they sold and it was just 
horrible. And you can imagine. Smell eau de snail. Oh my gosh. You can even only imagine. So yeah, we did a little bit of dyeing experiment. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, it was really fun. Our kids really enjoyed this it. Was they called, got to kind of you know, This, poke this stuff activity in. was called out in the curriculum. And so I said, hey, you know, that sounds like a fun thing. It's a little bit different yeah. than we normally do. That was pretty cool. We looked at the pictures of the boats and what they looked like because sailing, they had a nice mm -hmm. little history hop where they talked about sailing, um, sailing and also rowing in the boats. So that was kind of cool. And that kind of paired well with the previous week's history hop when we were in the Persians, when they were fighting, uh, they were fighting the Greeks in the, in the great naval battle there um, in Salamis. And uh, they were also rowing there as well. So you can see a lot of parallels and stuff. So it was kind of a cool thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the boats. We also did a lot more globe work because this is the point where you're kind of you're in the Mesopotamia, kind of like the western edge of the Mesopotamia, and then now all of a sudden we're in the Mediterranean. And so I really wanted to highlight that. So we did a lot of map work. We did a lot of globe work, highlighting certain areas and certain settlements that the Phoenicians created in the, in the Mediterranean and what areas they were connecting, you know, as we talked a little bit about that kind of being the glue of, of mm -hmm. different civilizations. That was kind of cool. Yeah, um, this, was then, a, this was a really interesting week. I think our daughter was, was happy to like this was branch a very, out. And, this was a very full week. Even though there were two very small civilizations, we made we made more of it this week um, than we yeah. had in the previous weeks. There I was think a little she bit was more. really excited to learn about all the, the sailing and the you know, yeah. voyages and where they went and the what? shapes of their boats. She was really into the so boats we, this week. I don't know why we don't have any of our boats. You know she drew a bunch of boat stuff this week. Yeah, we've been stuck in uh, city-state stuff for oh, a long right. time. Oh, right. Everything has and been like we've on been land. In the, we've been in the desert. And they've been battling over to the desert, and now we're in the ocean, and it was a nice change. Yeah, it was yeah. really. It was and really now good. we're going to the islands. Next week we're going to be in the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. Right, which still to our daughter, not the Greeks yet. Not the Greeks. She's, she, you know why she's excited about the Greeks? She's, she wants to read Percy Jackson. Well, that's and, what's exciting and her, to her. And her friend is doing the around the world, and she was she she started. Or, or no, no, the history they started earlier ancient, than us. Ancient civilizations yeah. they started because we did the prehistory. Um, and they've been on the Greeks for almost two months now. Yeah, they did. The, they did a. They called it a Greek summer. Greek and summer. So they've been doing it. So her friends so her been friend talking keeps to going, her. Are you? Are you? Are you did the Greek yet? And, and our kids are like, no, I'm. I don't know. I'm in the desert right now. I, I'm not, I don't know where I am. <laughs> My Sinoans. <laughs> My Sinoans. We're, like, we're like, you're gonna get to the Greeks, and we've yeah. been thinking as a family about taking a trip to Greece in a few years, yeah. um, and doing, you know, going to all of the ancient, you know, ruins and stuff like that. And we've talked a bit about that, and so she's like. All right, let's let's, let's hurry up and get there. So our we'll kids there. are our kids are both a little bit impatient. We're real planners. We've yep. planned out our trips like the next two or three years so, in advance, and our kids are like, "Is it here already?" But, it's, but you know, it's really cool as homeschoolers to see your kids like like clamoring for something. It is pretty and, cool, and you know, to have that coming up is pretty cool. So we're gonna have a good fun next week. We're gonna we're gonna really care about the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. Is this the one with the big gold mask, the really yeah. big flat one? That's that's yeah. one of them, right? I think so. That's the only thing I remember from the history book. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, those little islands just to the south of Greece. That's I think where we're gonna be. So we'll see you guys next week. We hope your homeschool is going great, and we'll see you next time.